Hi, I'm Dennis Grubb with Solar Energy. Today we're here in our demonstration room and we're here to talk about our solar powered off-grid power generation systems. Solar Energy offers several different sizes and several different types of systems. Um, in our demonstration room we have uh, two of them on display. Um, this is the Solaro Independent System. This particular unit is our 2500 watt system. And over here is our Solaro Independence Pro. This system is uh, 3200 watts. Um, the purpose of this video is just to go over some of the basics and explain to you how the systems work and what you can expect out of them and um, how the batteries connect to them, how you connect the solar panels to them, etc, etc, etc. But uh, first we'll start with the Solaro Independence. The Solaro Independence line is a little bit lower cost system, still has a lot of uh, features and functions, but it's a little bit less expensive. Um, this particular system is available in an 1800 watt system, um, 1800 watt, uh, 2500 watt, and 3000 watts. This system right here is um, our 2500 watt system. It's fully featured, has a lot of really good features. One of the um, uh, really nice features that we really like about it is it gives you the ability to connect it to a generator or to the grid in the event you have a long uh, period of time without any sun. Uh, that system works pretty simple. There's an output on the bottom of the um, system right here. That's this black cord. If you look over here to the right, for demonstration purposes, we have a cord which in this case can be connected to a generator or, or in our demonstration room we're using it to plug into the electric outlet. So I'm going to unplug this one and I'll plug it in to the electric outlet. Now what the system is doing is deriving its energy to charge the batteries from the grid. That could just as easily be connected to a generator. Nice feature. Um, normally in a normal installation in your home or your business there'd be a wall switch that you would throw. Um, one position it'll be operating strictly off the solar panels on your roof. The other position will be operating off of the grid. So it's a really nice feature and that's built in standard to the unit. Uh, there's a full function display up here that shows you uh, how much power you're receiving either from the grid or from your solar system as well as the condition of your batteries and the uh, condition of the power going out to your home. Um, when matching the system to your particular project, so for example if you're putting this in your cabin or your off-grid home, or even if you're using it as an emergency system in your home or your business, you want to be mindful to match the output of the system to the load that you're going to apply to it. And what I mean by that is you can't expect to use a system like this to run a great big air conditioner in your home or your business. It won't, won't work. The output on this particular unit, as I told you earlier, is 2500 watts, which means the maximum that this unit can supply is 2500 watts of power at any given moment. Um, that's not indicative of the amount of solar panels that you would uh, um, install on your roof. That's a whole different subject, which we'll talk about a little bit later. The, um, the, the main brain of the system or the main engine of the system which creates the AC power uh, we do refer to it as in this case an 1800, a 2500 or a 30, um, a 200 uh, watt system. Let me check my notes on that to make sure I got that right. Uh, 1800 watt, 2500 watt and 3000 watts. So um, let's go over some of the features and functions on this unit uh, as well as the AC input. We also have built-in cooling fans which allow the unit to um, uh, keep cool when it's under a high load. If you look down here you'll see the red and black wires that go into the unit. That's the DC supply from the batteries. And for demonstration purposes we only have two 100 amp batteries installed. In a, a practical installation you might have as many as 10 or 20 of these batteries so you have longer standby time. But for practical uh, example this works just fine. These batteries are DECA batteries, they're made in America. It's one of our primary products that we use for battery uh, backup. Um, they're 100 amps each and since the system requires 24 volts DC input we're putting two of them in series 
and we end up with 24 volts going into the system. It has an output uh, over here on the, on the bottom that uh, goes to the small sub-panel. The sub-panel we have uh, rated at 20 amps. And so um, we uh, take the output of the um, Solaro independent system to the input of the um, breaker, the output of the breaker to this plug. That plug could very well uh, be connected to uh, a circuit or multiple circuits in your home to take care of lighting, um, your kitchen circuit for your refrigerator or um, you know, tele television and your entertainment system. Um, if you have a, a situation where you're going to need more than this, you can stack these units in a row so you can have multiple um, units still coming off of one common battery pack. Uh, the installation instructions would show you how that would work. But uh, this is a great little system um, from, from that perspective. It's, it's a great cost, it's full of features, it's a great warranty, and it works very, very good. Let me give you a demonstration. As you can see right now, it's connected strictly to the batteries. The, power, the battery power is going into the uh, inverter. The inverter is doing the job of converting the DC power into um, AC power. What is also very important to note on this system is it's pure sine wave. A lot of the lower cost systems available in the market are modified sine wave. That doesn't work very good with motors and sensitive electronics like television systems, uh, uh, stereos and things like that. For example, your refrigerator has a, a motor in there that uh, controls the um, uh, cooling system of your refrigerator. That motor will work much better on a um, uh, pure sine wave. And so all the systems that we sell here in this type of configuration are full pure sine wave. Uh, let's go ahead and try an inductive load. In this case, I'm going to grab an electric heater. This is an uh, inductive load, which means it's, uh, pardon me, it's not inductive, it's a resistive load, which is um, uh, very difficult, very hard on uh, an inverter like this. So I'm going to show you how good it works. We'll go ahead and plug it into the um, outlet right here. And I'll turn it on. Full blast. And of course, it instantly works. The system is pretty sophisticated in the fact that it will actually display the amount of current that's uh, currently being used. So, um, if we can, let's get a close up on this. Okay, you can see right now the unit is um, displaying the output voltage is 119 volts AC at a 60 uh, hertz, which is exactly what we have here in the United States. And it shows that our load currently is at 55% of the rated capacity and the temperature of the um, uh, electronics on the inside are 29.5 degrees centigrade. It was operating very cool. So this would indicate to you that you would uh, um, not be able to actually use two of these heaters on this system. The worst type of a load that you could ever put on any type of an inverter system like this is going to be a resistive load. And that's how all these types of heaters work. Um, you're much better suited if you want to heat your house up when you have a solar powered system to use a gas uh, propane um, type heater. And you can use a small motor behind the gas powered heater to push the air out. And to demonstrate to you the difference in the efficiency, I'm going to turn this uh, fan, uh, the heater, down just to the fan. So if you take a close up on that, you'll see what I'm showing you here. This is the fan right here. We'll turn this over to just the fan, to where now we're not um, activating the, the uh, elements inside this heater. And we're just turning a fan across it. And come back up on the, um, the uh, display here. And what you'll see is the actual um, load doesn't even register. So it's using so little power that it's uh, at 0.0%, so it's not even really affecting it. Although you can see that it's, it's on. So um, it's an important thing to note is on systems like this, unless it's an absolute emergency, don't use electric heaters. 
you want to use a gas or propane type heater. Um, and of course, if you want to use a fan to circulate the heat, that's just fine. 